Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Chris here. So today we're going to go through a uh, fairly straightforward example of some very simple uses of the Git tool to help us get organized and, and kind of understand, you know, what is this Git tool doing? Again, we talked about the problem yesterday that we're trying to solve, so let's start solving it, right? Uh, this is going to be very introductory. Uh, a lot of you probably already know a lot of this stuff, but we want to start from the basics so that we can continue to build uh, throughout the, the, the coming days uh, in order to really have a solid, rock solid foundational knowledge of what Git's doing, what the tool is used for, why we're using it, what some of these trickier commands you know mean, and and and, and why we why we care about them. So number one, you see we have this project, right? Dope project. We've called it Cool Project Inc. We've got a bunch of cool features in here that are represented by these empty Python files. We've got some other stuff. We've got our configs. We've got some requirements. It's pretty awesome. So. Now we have this, we want to start get started with version control, right? We, we want to say, hey, it's not good enough that we have, uh, you know, this, this only exists here. It's not good enough that we're, we can't track and revert and go back and all of this awesome stuff that you love to do, um, you know, and, and version control helps us to do. So we're just going to get started. The first thing that you would normally do is you would install Git. Uh, so this page here. Uh, provides in you know instructions that will help you to do that. Um, you definitely you know just download it however you want. Uh, you can install it however you want. Just make sure you get it installed and make sure it's installed with the old git version command. Uh, make sure that you can see an output from that command and that should be good. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about just because this page talks about it, and I think it is useful, is you can set some useful global configurations in GitHub. So these are configurations that, uh, you know, let's say we want to add information to someone's repository, right? Having things like our username, uh, having things like our user email help us to understand, you know, knowing who's doing what changes, knowing who's responsible for what changes. So it's just, you know, it's, it's awesome. Uh, it's just awesome. Now, if you want to use specific usernames and stuff like this, again, Git has that option, but we're just going to stick with the, the basics here. Uh, you can also set your, your global uh, editor if you ever get stuck in Vim you know, with uh, don't know how to exit, you can switch it to nano or, or whatever your preferred uh, command line text editor is. Uh, yes. So another very helpful thing to do, by the way, is to set your default branch domain, right? So uh, it, this, this makes it so you don't have to run that uh, initial command to set your main branch domain, and that will just make things faster. So we can look at these options with the command git config list. You can see here that I have my email, my username. I've got, you know, some git LFS stuff uh, set, uh, as well as I've got this default branch main, and my core editor is VI. There we go. Isn't that awesome? So, moving on. Now that we have our, you know, git tool set up to get CLI set up, what can we actually do with it? So let's just go to this, you know, next page here and check it out, right? So we can just initialize a Git repository real straightforwardly with Git init, right? And that's it. Initialized empty Git repository in the directory. There you go. Uh, and we can confirm that that ran by checking out uh, our files and we can see this dot git directory not dot git directory is where all the magic happens now one thing that's cool that i don't think a lot of people uh you know think a lot about but it is true is git doesn't require github right git is a tool in and of itself it is a tool that works uh you know in and of itself you can just use it for local development uh, you don't have to use it with github if you want all the advanced features of Git uh, that involve like the ability to revert to previous commits, branch development, all these other really amazing development accelerators and productivity productivity enhancements, you can just do it locally, right? You don't have to use GitHub. I mean, listen, 
Is it better to have your data in two places rather than one places? Yes, for sure. What happens if a if a lightning bolt strikes down your hard drive, right? But uh, at the end of the day, you don't have to use something like GitHub Hub, uh, or, or platforms like Bitbucket or, uh, or the GitLabs or the like, right? You can just use Git locally. Um, and, you know, I recommend that you do, even if you're not going to push that project to GitHub. Honestly, I recommend you do, right? There's, a, there's kind of like a meme, but it's super true, which is commit early and commit often. The reason we do that is because being able to go back in time is invaluable, right? What if you break something and you don't know how to get back and your computer rebooted since the last time you're working. So you can't just control Z your way out of this one, right? Uh, control Z for all the other Canadians out there, by the way. Uh, but yes, so gets awesome and it, you don't need to attach it to anything. It just works. Uh, but let's talk about how it works and what it does. The first command that I really want to talk about is get status. Now, get status is a great command uh, because it introduces us to how powerful a tool Git is, right? So right away, look at all this information we have. It's like a lot of text, right? That's telling us a lot of information. It lets us know what branch we're on. We're going to talk about branches in a few days. Don't worry about uh, that if you're not, not quite sure what that means yet. It says there's no commits. Tells us what our untracked files are. Tells us that there's nothing added to commit, but there are untracked files. And here are some things we can do to change those to tracked files. I mean, this tool is incredible. And it the outputs that it produces are fantastic. There's so much information in the outputs of these Git commands. Like if you even if you aren't connected to the internet, but you have a Git, you can probably work your way through a lot of issues with the tool because of how well uh, it is set up. Not to mention the fact that like, uh, you know, if we use something like get help on one of the commands that it has, like say this get add thing, right? So if we type our get help add, I mean, look at the amount of information that we are given, right? Look, 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 this is insane. It tells us everything. It tells us everything we need. It tells us all in plain English, it gives us overviews of what things are doing. It gives us all of the flags we can use. It, 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 it explains things more simply in case we need that, right? So like this effectively runs this, but bypasses the initial commandment. Like it gives us so much incredible information. This tool is like one of the best tools around. Look at this, we're still going, right? It shows us examples. So yes, absolutely gets a, a, a fantastic tool. And this is one of the reasons, right? If you're ever stuck, it's like 90% uh, chance you can resolve the issue that you're having by just using the tool, looking through the help, looking through what the outputs are telling you. Uh, but for now, we're just going to talk about what it's actually doing, right? So we, we're seeing some new words here. We're seeing commits. We're seeing untracked files. Uh, we're, we're, we're seeing we can track files. Uh, so what does that mean? Well, the website here has a wonderful little diagram for us to look at and, and, and explore. So uh, we, we, we can look at that and we can see that there are these kind of four pillars, right? So we have untracked, unmodified, modified, and staged. And then we have some arrows pointing to different ones and how we get there. So the first thing I want to talk about is like, what is an untracked file? Basically, an untracked file is just a file that gets not sure about it wasn't in a previous snapshot or in the previous snapshot so it's not part it's not part of the current you know uh the the, the current files that git cares about now the way you can think about git is that it kind of keeps this record it's a record keeper right and it keeps a record of all the files that that you have what their contents are and then information about, you know, what you said when you added those files to this record or committed the files to the record, uh, what you, uh, you know, what you were doing, what other files you added or committed, like it, it has all of the information we need. Now, one thing to be clear about is that there's a difference between add and commit. So let's talk about the difference now. So right now, our files are untracked which means that Git isn't aware of them in a sense that it, it's they're not part of the current record, right? So how do we get them to be part of the current record? 
Well, it's a two-step process. You can shortcut this, by the way. We can talk about that down the road. But for right now, we're going to talk about this as a two-step process. So the first thing we want to do is we want to track these files. So how do we track them? We're going to add these files into staging. This is staged pillar here, right? So what does staged mean? Staged is like, hey, Git, I'm thinking about committing these to your record, right? Here are some files. I want you to, to when I run a commit, I want you to move these ones into the record, right? So let's look at how we might add a file. I mean, first of all, the docs were incredibly helpful. So if we needed to, we could, again, go back to get help add, and we can look at get add, adds file to the index. Okay, so how do we use this? Okay, so we uh, get space add and a bunch of flags. Okay, so what, what if I just want to like add a file? How do I... How do I know how to do that? Well, we can just scroll on down to the examples and we can see, okay, so yeah, we could just do git add some stuff. Okay, cool. So I, you know, I think I have it worked out. Let's just try it out. So git add and let's, let's just add config.yaml, right? So git add config.yaml. And then let's check git status to see what's changed. Boom. Here we go. All right, cool. So we have some new information here, right? The, the, the git status has changed. One of these files is green now, first of all. And second of all, we're, you know, we're missing an untracked file. Well, that's because we've staged this config YAML through the git add command, right? So now this file is ready to be staged, which means that we're, we're saying, hey, git, if I want to commit things to the record, git's going to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take all the stuff that's in staging, man. You know, I, I'm going to put that on the record. So we've set this file up to be committed. Now you'll see we still haven't committed anything. So the record still doesn't have an awareness of this file, right? It, it, we haven't actually committed it. We've just staged it. So first things first, let's talk about the other two pillars, which is unmodified and modified. So Unmodified means this file is in the state that it appears on the record in. So let's say for, for simplicity's sake, you know, that we, we have a file and we never touch it for 10 years. The whole time it's an unmodified, right? The moment we make changes to that file though, it moves into the modified category. Now, now gets like the contents of this file are different. What's going on, right? Or is that something you're gonna commit? Is that just something you're doing? You know, are you going to stage that eventually? Like, you know, what, what, get get needs you to tell what to do with this file. But for now, it just knows it's different to what the record says it should be. So let's look at actually making some commits here. So let's look at committing some of our changes to this record. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the app directory uh, to get add. And I'm going to do a get status. You'll notice that while it was in untracked and appeared that it's just a directory. We actually get the, the file that's being added when we use that get add. And so each of these sub files that were in the subdirectory of app are being added. Uh, and that's one of the really cool things about Git, right? It is, it, it knows all of this for us. We don't have to worry about specifying exactly the path to each file. If we tell it a directory, it will also add everything in that directory. We can use uh, advanced, uh, you know, characters and things like this to change that up that you can view in the Git help add, uh, you know, page. But for now, I'm happy with this. I want to commit it though. So immediately you might think, okay, so we just run git commit, right? And you're probably right. We could just type git commit. And then it says this. Commit, edit message, 70 lines. What is going on? Hit return to continue. Okay. And now we're here. Please enter the commit message before your change or for your changes. Lines starting with hash uh, will be ignored and an empty message aborts the commit. Okay, cool. So I see it. I see what it's doing, right? What Git does is it automatically generates the changes that you are committing, the uh, untracked files. It, 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 it shows you everything about what your commit is, 
right? So it tells you what you're doing so that you never have to be like stumbling around. Like, I'm not sure what this commit's about. Get, no, nah, man, get handles that for you. So we know what we're doing. We're changing, we're committing these three features uh, as well as we're co committing this config. So we can, we can enter a message basically. And that message can be something like, uh, you know, initial commit. Lazy, I know, but it's what you need to, uh, you know, it's what you need to do. It's tradition. Your first commit just kind of says initial commit. Now I'm using the editor VI, so I'm going to use the, uh, the command escape, which will put me into command mode, and then colon WQ, which will write and quit the file. So go ahead and do that. And we see uh, a lot of text, a lot of numbers, a lot of cool stuff. We'll go more into what these kinds of hashes mean and why they're useful uh, down the road. But for right now, content to say we've committed these files. These files are now committed. So where are they, right? So if we do get status, we see on branch main, untracked files is requirements.txt. And we, we don't see anything else, right? That's right, because they're in unmodified now. We get, get you know... The, the files haven't changed since we committed them, so Git doesn't care. So like, let's go into our config YAML and just add some, like, uh, you know, a key. Dev equals cool stuff uh, save, right? So now we've made changes to our, to our config.yaml. If we go back to our Git status, we get to see, oh, nice. Okay, so this is actually the modified pillar, right? So we, we get to see this modified pillar. And Git tells us this is modified, right? It's not untracked, it's modified. We know about this file, but the contents have changed in a way that make us uh, think that this is modified. And it tells us some cool stuff we can do with this file. For now, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to git add dot. Now git add dot will add everything. So if we look at our git status after running git add dot, you'll see everything was added. We have the modified changes to the config as well as we have this new file that we're staging. So now all these files are, they've been moved out of modified and untracked and into staged. Now there we can get commit. Now this time we're going to uh, use the dash M flag to shortcut the process that we saw before where it brought up VI and we, we had to type some some lines and we can just do that part here. So we're going to, I'm just gonna say added uh, requirements uh, dot text and modified config. This is not a productive commit message to be sure, uh, but uh, it is what it is. We're just doing a quick fast and loose kind of uh, thing here. And we'll see that we have these, uh, these changes have been committed. You'll notice as well that this number or hash is different to the other one. And that's super important. We're going to talk about that in more detail later on. But for right now, just need to see that it is. Now we can do a get status and see on branch main, nothing to commit, working tree clean. We're happy, right? Everything's happy. Everyone's pumped. And this is the power of git. That's how easy it is. We're, we, we're already gitting. And what we can also do is we can check out our git history with git log. So check this out. This is the this is the power of git. Right? We're going to talk about how we can move around in here, what some of this stuff means in more detail later on, but for right now, I just want to show you we this is the record, right? This is the record of what's happened in our repository. Check it out. We haven't touched GitHub. We're not online. You know, we're we're just we're just over here chilling in our terminal and we already have a commit history. We, we, we have, you know, our initial commit and then our requirements.txt and, and modified config, right? We could already go back. We, this, is, this is how powerful this tool is. So for right now, we're going to call it there. So I know we didn't do a whole lot. Uh, we, we installed Git. We talked about the different places files can live, you know, untracked files, ones that aren't on the last snapshot, uh, unmodified files, ones that are, match up with the current record, modified files, files that exist in the record but are different 
to the way they exist in the record. So we changed the contents of them and then staged changes, which is changes that we're, we're saying we're going to, or we intend to commit these uh, changes. And when we do our commit to the record, it's going to pull from those staged files, right? It's not going to pull those unmodified files or sort of those untracked files. Like we saw when we committed everything, but requirements.txt requirements.txt did it wasn't part of the 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 record yet it was still on track so th this is the the you know it's it's not a lot of things we've covered but it's still a lot of information and i think that knowing everything and getting that kind of you know ground up approach understanding of this tool is really necessary to to use it in a way that makes sense so tomorrow we're going to go into this is great it's local we love it but what if we want to use a platform like GitHub, right? What if we want to share this project with others? How do we do that? Uh, how do we use these tools to to make that easy and wonderful? So yeah, uh, thank you so much for your time, guys. I, this video went on very long. It's like uh, 20 minutes long. So I very, uh, if, if you're still watching, hey, thanks. Uh, you know, it's, there's just a lot to say, a lot to talk about. Uh, hopefully though, you found some value in this and uh, please leave in the in the comment or whatever, uh, if you did, and we'll we'll see you tomorrow when we talk more about kind of some advanced uh, features uh, when it comes to interacting with remote repositories or things that aren't just our local computer. Uh, and then, yeah, so we're just going to keep doing these until we kind of go through all of Git. So so hold on to your hats because we're going to be we're going to be doing this a bit. Okay, thank you all for your time, and uh, we'll see you later. All right, bye.